What up, everyone? It's your boy, Satem Ali, the Reverend of the Revolution, welcoming you to another edition of your Daily Revolution, the podcast and the movement that helps you to wake up, turn your brain on, and to prosper every single day in every part of your life. Today's topic, ask, listen, and be humble. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. We jumped on a flight today heading to Missouri, and I'm shooting this podcast from Independence, Missouri, getting ready for a family reunion. An interesting thing happened. Got to the airport, and Southwest had a direct flight from John Wayne Airport, Orange County, to Kansas City. How cool is that? So we got into Southwest. I'm one of the first ones on the plane, and I decided to take the exit row and have my three boys sit in front of me while me and my wife would just sit inside of the exit row and have extra legroom for the three-hour flight. And when I explained this to the flight attendant, uh, she was against it. She said, well, that's not going to work. And my immediate response was, well, is is there a rule that says I can't do that? And she's like, well, there's no written rule. And then, of course, I came back and said, well, then can I do it? And again, I'm asking, right, powerful people. They simply ask and they're gracious. And she said, no, there's no rule, but I have the final say. And I can do what I need to do on this plane to protect you. And she went on to explain, well, you know, if there was an emergency, she would want me and my wife focused on the door. I'm like, cool. And I had no, like, hesitation about moving. I said, you know what? You're right. If that's if that's the way it is, I'll go ahead and sit on the back with my boys. And so I went and sat on the back, the very back seat with my boys and my wife and one of my sons in front of me. Now, here's the lesson. Or here's the point of this. You see, a lot of people will get butt hurt about little things, you know, they, they have egos and pride, and you got to remember the flight attendant, she's the professional on the flight, she knows what she's doing, and she knows what potential hazards could come, I don't, I'm just looking for some extra leg room, so for about two seconds, I almost was like, listen, but of course, I swallowed my pride, and I was like, cool, I'll go sit in the back, and, and moving on, the whole flight, she brought me drinks and goodies, and she was just so gracious. And she says, you know, you are, you're so kind. She's like, most people, they just want to argue with me about, you know, they think they have entitled rights to the exit row. And I said, I totally get it. Now, here's the lesson for you, my brothers and sisters. Number one, don't be afraid to ask. I asked some very straightforward questions because I knew what I wanted. I wanted to have leg room for the flight, three-hour flight. I wanted to sit by my wife for the flight, and I know that kids can't sit in the exit row. So I asked. And principle number six, ask and you shall receive, listen and you receive more. Well, I listened, and I asked again, and I listened. Finally, when she said, hey, this is how it is, I'm like, cool. I had no problem getting my bag and my stuff and going to the back and then just hanging out with my boys the entire flight, which we had a great flight. Now, how does this relate to you? Number one, are you asking for things in your life? Do you ask and do you listen? Do you ask for what you want and do you listen for the answers? I know a lot of people who pray. They pray to God. They ask and they ask and they ask, but they rarely listen. How do I know they don't listen? Because typically God will send you answers in the form of books, audios, other people, family, friends, leaders. It's like people kind of like angels, but that's how God answers our prayers typically. So you ask God for help. He gives you the answers. You don't want to listen. How about you listen? So step one, start asking. If you knew how short this life was, you'd start making bigger and bigger requests. So are you willing to do that? Are you willing to ask for what you want? Now, if you say you want to be healthy and you continue to eat garbage food, well, that's not going to work. If you say you want to be more wealthier financially, but you do nothing to increase your skill set or to do the required work, that's not going to work. That's simply unworkable. So if you are asking and you are making bigger requests, you better be sincere and have real intent in what you're asking for because you're going to have to follow it up with action. I remember being in high school, asking for bigger muscles, asking to be a greater player, lifting weights, and yes, it was followed by pure action. Lifting weights, working out, eating the proper foods, being consistent in business, coming out of the bankruptcy, asking for help. And what did uh, God deliver to me? Well, he gave me an opportunity to look like knocking on doors for three summers when I wanted to become a coach, which is what I do today and a speaker and build a hundred million dollar company. 
I asked, and well, what did I receive? Coaches and mentors who I needed to pay and hire to help me build and grow me, then build and grow my sales processes, and then build and grow my products. And soon enough, I'm going to start building my team. I've already got five people hired. Notice this. I ask, and when I receive, I take action. See, if you ask, listen, receive, and take action, you actually get more. So ask, listen, and then the final piece is be humble. The fact that the flight attendant was so gracious to me and said, you know, most people are are not very kind. It tells me there's a lot of entitled people out there. Humility goes a long ways. And humility is not weak. Humility is being gracious. Humility is listening. Humility is knowing who you are and whose you are. So ask, listen, be humble. Ask, listen, and be humble. And notice this, if you'll do this in every part of your life, your life will change. Let's take a look at the body and physicality. You want to get stronger, you want to lose weight, you want to be healthier, have more energy and vitality? Ask. There is no shortage of information, so ask. But if you are asking with no intent of doing, don't ask. You're wasting your time. When it comes to spirituality, this is an easy one. Ask and you shall receive. A phrase repeated throughout Christian scripture. Ask and you shall receive. So again, if you're asking with a sincere heart and real intent, which means you really want to know and you're really open and you're willing to take action what God tells you to do, then you better be willing to listen as you ask because God will tell you. I have no doubt about this. Every time in my life when I feel like I'm off course, off the path, typically get on my knees at my bedside, Find a place, as the scriptures say, go to your closets. It doesn't have to be your real closet. It just means a place where you can really commune with God. And I ask. I say, God, if I'm off track, please let me know. And help me to know what I need to course correct. Please help me to know. Now, for those of you who don't believe in God, that's fine. Just ask the universe. It's like the same thing, man. Come on now. Same thing. Some people call it the universe. Well, I call it God. All-powerful, all-knowing. And every time I've ever asked... I always receive, always. Inside of your relationships, go and ask your kids today, what can I do to be a better daddy or a better mommy? I ask my boys about once a month, and well, my my nine-year-old, he's pretty, uh, nothing, daddy, you're great. You're great, daddy. And then I'll have to kind of beat it out of him. He's already trained, taught, and educated to sugarcoat his answers, to not hurt feelings, and I'm trying to help him to break that, to be real, to be truthful, Well, Daddy, you could do this. And I'm like, okay, I'll do that, and I'll work on it. I asked my six-year-old, I asked my four-year-old. Nothing, Daddy, you're the best Daddy ever. (laughs) I'm sure that's going to change as they get older, and I get a little more strict with them. So go and ask your spouse, baby, what can I do today to be better? And again, the first answer is typically not going to be very truthful. It's always sugar-coated, so then you ask again. uh, What can I do, or how can I improve to be in just one thing? And ask, listen, and be humble, be teachable in your business. Ask, you know, if you're the boss, go ask your employees. If you're an employee, go ask the boss. If you're a partner, go ask the other partner. If you're a coach, ask the clients. I mean, in everywhere, everything you do with your business, with your bank account, with your finances, your skill sets and mindsets, all you have to do is ask and be humble and teachable. I'm grateful for the lesson that I was reminded of today and wanting to sit in the exit row, but ended up sitting in the back because the flight attendant said, not a good idea, and I I won't allow you to do it. And then she gave us a bunch of free drinks and a bunch of free food, and she was just bending over backwards to let us know she appreciated us. This will work in your life, brothers and sisters, but if you're asking, you better be willing to listen, take action, and to be humble, which means to be open and to be teachable. This will work, my brothers and sisters. This will work. Listen, if you knew how short life was, I promise you, you would take action and you would make bigger requests because in a matter of days, weeks, or months, you could be buried six feet under and your time could be up. And one of the greatest pains is going to the grave with regret, knowing the things you could have done, should have done, would have done, but did not do it. Ask, listen, be humble. Ask, listen, be humble. 
It's amazing what happens when you make those simple course corrections today. This is your boy, Satem Mangala, reminding you, if you're going to create a life of real radical results, a life that you love, it will require you to get into a relentless pursuit with a ruthless commitment to pay the piper every single day so that you can get to the top of your mountains where your prize, promise signs, and possibilities are waiting, just waiting for you. The revolution has begun. I'm out. For more info on joining the revolution and living your greatest life of prosperity today, go to www.yourdailyrevolution.com and join us in waking up, turning your brain on, and prospering today.